Welcome everybody to Real Talk with the, the Cumbies. Today we have a special guest with us. He is the pastor and founder of El Shaddai Ministry. He has written many books such as The Blood Moons, Decoding the Intimate Heavenly Times, God's Day Timer, The Believer's Guide to Divine Appointments, Decoding the Antichrist and the End Times, Decoding the Prophet Jeremiah. Today we'll be discussing his new book that will be released in March. America at War 2024-2026. Welcome, Pastor Mark. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, I'm really excited about this book. Uh, from the standpoint, it's a warning. So there's no, for our borders being opened up, for people crossing over. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I really see uh, terrorist attacks coming. I see people blowing themselves up. Suicide bombers here in America this year, where they're blowing themselves up on bridges and grocery stores at gas stations. Can you imagine the terror that would happen to Americans every time they walked into a grocery store, not being able to see in the other aisle, wondering if that person that's over there is going to blow themselves up or at a gas station, how do you go up and get gas? And so I, I really see not only will we have terror, and I can prove that biblically because we're trying to get a two-state solution. We're trying to solve the Israeli conflict or the Middle East conflict. And in Joel 3, 2, God said he's going to come against every nation that's trying to part his land. And in Zechariah 1 is when the red horse rides of Revelation. If you go back and look at it, and God says there's these four horns on this altar. And he's going to send carpenters that are going to terrorize. That's literally the Hebrew word, terrorize those four horns, because they are the four horns who are trying to divide the land of Israel. Who are those four horns? It's the EU. It's the UN. It's the US and Russia. So I see the patterns of what's coming. Terrorism is coming to the United States along with, look at the election, the chaos of 2020. It's going to be magnified this year with the election. You're going to see the left against the right. You're going to see pro-Palestinians against pro-Israelis. You're going to see like the Black Lives Matter against the white supremacists. I mean, we have so many, uh, we're so divided that a nation divided can't right. stand. And we're, we have so many fractures in so many areas that this is why I believe over this next two years, China will attack Taiwan. North Korea will attack South Korea or Japan, uh, as well as Iran and Hezbollah attack the United States. And then you got the Russia and Ukraine, and there's going to be chaos. We may not even have a president this election. And that's why those other people, when we're weak, they know we, we can't be too spread out. Well, Pastor Mark, I know um, a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting there and went to the gas station, drove by the gas station, men and men and the children. And when I seen at the gas station, 278, and I says, it'll drop down because of elections coming. I seen Joe Biden's face, and he, it's just like it disappeared. I seen um, Donald J. Trump's face, and he got slid right over. And then I seen a black silhouette with a white question, um, a question mark with a white line. Well, I came home, and I was sitting there talking late that night, and my little girl says, did you see when he got slid over? And I'm like, how did you see that faith and face like, yes. Did you see the outline of the white with the question mark? And I said, yes. She says, Donald Trump didn't die. He just got slid over. And then as I start reading this book, because our children, we believe in the prophetic and God's God's raising up his sons and daughters. And so when I'm sitting here looking at, and I'm hearing your book, aren't pastor Mark for our viewers, honest and truthful. You've helped so many people. There's been so many books wrote because of your material and we are so thankful that you're sharing with us the truth today because it's time that we hear the truth. And it's what you're doing is you're sounding the alarm. You're Ezekiel 33. You're saying, it's coming. Get your house in order. Exactly. And I mean, the most important thing is draw close to God. It's got to be your yes. relationship. I mean, it's good to prepare, but if you have to flee, what good is all that stored food going to do you? You know, so, uh, I mean, our trust has to be in the Lord, 100%. Uh, you know, I mean, I have a few stuff. El Shaddai has a few stuff, but it's to share, not to hoard. You know, if, if someone comes, it's like, hey, have some of this, have some of this. Uh, I just have that's, no fear. That's what God's laid on our heart because um, we do canon and different things. We have big gardens and uh, we help the community. But God told me it was last year. He spoke to me. He said, Scott, 
what are you going to do with this? And I'm like, well, Lord, I'll feed my family. We're taking care of our family here. He says, will you give it to people? If you give it, I can multiply it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what God wants us to do. God doesn't want us just to store up for ourselves, but he's wanting us to be able to help his children, help the body of Christ. Exactly. We have one head, it's Jesus. Yeah. And what we need to do is work together. And so exactly. I'm, I'm just sitting at your feet today and I'm listening right now. So share with us um, how this, how it crosses backwards and forth in Little Egypt you talked about. But how about during uh, Texas, that triangle? Can you talk to us about that? Yes. Uh, the other place that intersects is where uh, an annular solar eclipse went from Oregon, but down through Texas. And when you think of uh, the capital letter A, and so you have the top of the letter A, the point in Oregon, one leg goes through Little Egypt, and then the one that happened a week after Hamas attacked went from Oregon down through Texas. Now, this is going, the one coming up April 8th is going to form the bar of the capital letter A, okay, going across. Well, it intersects first down in southern Texas in an area known as the Texas Triangle, which is the number one human sex trafficking or human trafficking place in the entire United States. This is where it is taking place, and they're going to free the slaves. I think God told me he's going to really free a bunch of those who are in slavery, you know, having to cook or, you know, they get stuck in rich people's houses and they have to be their landscaper or they have, you know, they'll take these illegal immigrants and they'll take advantage of all of them. Uh, but, you know, and then they change the language. Illegal means something different. You know, they'll, they'll change everything. But uh, to me, this is huge where it's going to be occurring. And that's why I know, again, God is judging, going to be judging this nation. So when people sit and they're in bondage, what we've been taught that it's okay as long as we, we as long as we're in control. But the truth in this actually is, it's time that we start repenting before God, turning from our wicked ways. Our house, it starts with our house. It doesn't start with the church house, White House. It starts with me as an individual. It's time for me to repent. It's time for each of us to repent and to look to God, like you said, His calendar, His appointment, His appendix, and says, God, what do you want me to do? Oh, absolutely. That's why one of the eclipses is in the month of repentance to prepare us for Rosh Hashanah. Now, how many of your listeners believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes, sir. Do they believe it mentally or do they really believe it down in their heart? Well, if that's the case, if he fulfilled all the spring feasts to the day of his first coming, dying on Passover, buried on unleavened bread, rising on the feast of first fruits, he will fulfill the fall feast to the day of his second coming. And the next feast is the feast of trumpets. We hear trumpets all through the book of Revelation. And so they have to be fulfilled in order. The spring feast had to be fulfilled in order. The fall feast have to be fulfilled in order. And so the fall feast begin with Rosh Hashanah, which is when there's a huge solar eclipse. So he has the lunar eclipse the month before the solar eclipse, double warning, but also it's for Israel as well as the nations. We're going to see, I believe, global warfare starting this fall, especially the United States. And the sad so God, thing is, God declares it in the heavens. Go yes, ahead. sir. And the sad thing is, though, just like you said, if we do not understand that God has his specific time and it's not the Gregorian calendar, it's not right. man's time. And so it's very important for us as individuals, us as believers. And if you're not a believer, how amazing you can get receive the truth right now. But it's amazing that we need to also be aware of these feasts. Because it gives us opportunities, like you said, to repent. It yes. gives us opportunities to purge. It gives us opportunities to get our houses in order and make sure that we are in the right align with the Heavenly Father. That's so important. And the problem really is the English language. In Genesis 1.14, when it says the sun and the moon were made for signs, and then it says seasons, most people think, that's winter, spring, summer, or fall. But that's the incorrect right. translation. Because in Leviticus 23, when it talks about the feast of the Lord, it's the same Hebrew word. So does that Hebrew word mean uh, winter, spring? Or does it mean a lot of food and a party? Both translations are wrong. When it says seasons, 
It's more like tax season, duck season, rabbit season. It means an appointed time that something is allowed. So God, even then the feast doesn't mean food again. It, you may have food participate, but the main thing is it's an appointed time that God. Now, if we're when they were slaves in Egypt, who controlled their time? Pharaoh. The master. The master. Aye. But Christians, what do they do? They come out of Egypt, but they stay on their calendar. God is the master, and he tells us what time we're to meet. I mean, if you have a job and your boss tells you we're going to have a meeting on Monday, can you go to him and say, no, thank you. Let's make it Tuesday. You're going to lose your job. Well, this is the problem <laughs> with Christianity. For, and if you know in the book of Daniel, he says the Antichrist's whole purpose is to change the time and seasons. Why? Because he doesn't want us to meet with God at his specific times. You're telling the honest truth. That's that's the whole truth. It's deception. And how does he do it with our time? And if we can get our time on something else, we forget about the most important meeting. And here's what I've learned. Um, I was talking with a friend the other day, and I said, I was talking to him. I says, would your wife mind if you change your anniversary or her yeah, birthday? Exactly. <laughs> to uh, your ex-girlfriend's birthday, because you could remember it easier, you know what I'm saying? And he says, Scott, he said, we wouldn't be married long. But that's what they're doing. They're, they're telling exactly. God, I've got my own thing, and here's the problem. People, is they think that it's all about us being happy. It's all about me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's got something to do with the great I am. He's uh -huh. God, not me. I love it. I'm the sheep. I love it. Too many people, they put Jesus in their pocket and they only pull him out when he needs them. Otherwise, he's to stay out of their life. The big problem, people do not want to be saved from their sin. They only want to be saved from the consequence of their sin. Amen. And that's the problem. Too many people are totally self-centered. It's all about me. And so everything they do in all their relationships, it's all about them. We have to realize we want to serve God because it's all about him. We don't want to break his heart. That's right. And even I was reading over in your uh, in the book, too, where you were saying not only is it about that, but it's also worked inside the church where you have supposedly men and women of God standing up, supposed to be bringing the teaching. But instead of bringing the trueness of the word, they're just pacifying them or what we say, massaging them and just making them feel good. Exactly. They want to be a life coach. That's what pastors want to do. They don't want to make anybody accountable. They want to be a life coach and make them feel good in their sin. So they'll send them money. Amen. And here's the thing though. If we read the God of the Bible, he teaches us take one coat. He says, you go into the house when it's open. And here's what's happening. A lot of times we got to have certain criteria for people to step into. But what they're looking at is their needs. And they don't look at God's needs is for people to hear the gospel. How yeah. can they go unless someone's sent? How can they go unless there's a pastor just like you? You're sharing the word today. And it's reaching around the globe. And people need to hear the truth. Because what you're saying is, it's the word of God, and it will set their soul free. How can our listeners get your book? Go to esm.us. But I want to do something particularly for your listeners. If your listeners right now, they go to that website and they email us, I want them to put down that they heard it on your show. And I'll give them $5 off. So we right now, the book so is going to retail. We don't have the book right now. They have to understand, I'm not going to have the book in hand until uh, the middle of March. But they can go ahead and order it now. I, they don't even have to put down any money, but just let us know how many books that they want. I mean, we have some people ordering 25 books, 40 books. It's insane. But uh, however many books they want, they put down how many books, and in their email, put how we can get a hold of them if they don't have the internet for some reason. But I can't imagine them watching you if they don't have the internet. But anyway, the book is going to retail for like $39.95. Right now, it's on our website for $24.95, but I'll give it to all your listeners for $20 if they mention you, your radio station or you when they call in. Well, we're so thankful. Or I can emails. tell you that. Yes, sir.